one reason why I'm so insecure in relationships is because when in my previous relationships, when I get attached to someone, a lot of the times the sentiment isn't returned. I was actually in uh, quite an abusive and toxic relationship for about 13 years. The person I was seeing, you know, the, the, way, the way she felt about our problems made it sound as if everything was my fault. I was molested when I was 16 years old and my ex actually told me that maybe the reason why it happened is because you liked it. So it really messed up my mind. I just felt like I always had to apologise for everything and it felt really stressful. I just wasn't very happy and honestly I felt very trapped. In my 30s, um, I have this feeling like, am I ever going to find love? Like, do I even want to find love? Is there such thing as love, to be honest? Because everything that I thought was love or I knew was love was actually quite wrong and toxic and bad for me. So I'm going to meet my matchmaker now. Quite excited. Don't really know what to expect. Sweating because it's humid, but also because I'm nervous. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Hi, this is Elena here. Hi, Hi, nice to meet you, Nicole. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Maybe, you know, firstly, we can start off with a little bit more of your dating experience. I've been single for five years. Mm -hmm. And between that time, I've sort of like been dating around, but like nothing really blossom from that. Hello, hi, Mo. Hi. Yeah, hello. Hi. Have a seat, have a seat. So you're Michelle and you're the founder of Complete Me. You are a matchmaker who sets people up through dating events. Yes. So what are some unusual or unique dating events that you have organised for people in the past? Okay, we specialise in speed dating, but um, the speed dating comes with an element, different teams. Right. Like for example, we have like Zodiac, speed dating, blood type compatibility, oh, wow. DNA compatibility, okay. uh, divorcees, widows, right. then right. Uh, for mature uh, singles and also okay. for the young singles. Right. What kind of demographics do you see attending matchmaking events? Because for example, someone like me or my friends, um, yeah. I wouldn't really join. What? You look too young. Can I uh, ask? I'm, I'm 30. Ah, yeah. okay. My participants are typically in their 30s and 40s right. who are ready to move on to the next stage of things. There are an increased number of the 20s joining right. me, so I create more exciting events for them, sure. like for example, escape room, okay. VR games, okay. and okay. I also bring them on cruises. We, we do see an increase with um, like people in their mid-20s coming to us. You know? Okay. Yes. Like people like yourself, you have been using online for a while, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes, exactly. So that's where you will be probably you feel a bit jaded mm. or you know not getting much success. The app, uh, it's everyone and anyone can be on it. Sure. Right? Right. So then some people just swipe right to everyone. Right, yeah. right. There's no real filter system. The keyword is screening system. Every participants that join our events, we need to go through the marital screening okay. to make okay. sure that it's really single, single. Okay. Right. And not only that, because we as facilitators are there, in a way, so there is an additional level of safety. We focus a lot on like um, personality, you know, mm. we do have like personality tests. Mm. Uh, we also focus a lot on like love language, um, mm. your dating behaviour, dating personality. I feel like in my experience, the people that I've matched best with, I don't necessarily have a lot of like mm. common interests right. or like same goals in life, but mm -hmm. like we just get along. So mm. I suppose like, how do you justify like you all see uh, two profiles, right? And you're like, okay, we can match them based on like common interests and common goals. Mm. A lot of times when a lot of people think about what they want in an ideal partner, right? Mm. Um, they definitely have what they want on paper. Mm. Um, but I think at the end of the day, right, it's really about like certain chemistry that we cannot control as well, right? Mm. So, so you're saying something's out of your hands. Yes, exactly. Mm. At the end of the day, I think it's always about having an open mind. Even though if, let's say, this, this person doesn't tick all of your boxes, mm. yeah. But I think um, what is most important is wanting to have this conversation with this person. Mm. Uh, Wanting to actually understand this person better. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we do like have feedback as well, you know, after the date. Uh, mm. This is where then you will be able to have a better understanding. Also, and you get to hear, like, if I go on a date with somebody, you get to mm. hear, like, what they say about me or so. Uh, yes, that's right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of profile do you think I fit into? Uh, okay, you have already said you're an extrovert, and like what you say, we are having a good chat. So, communication definitely no problem. So, of I course, think yeah. you would have enjoyed things like the outdoor type, 
or the drinking type where it's free and easy. The structured right. speed dating one, I don't think it's like, you'll be like stiffenated and say, I want him to be yeah. out of that. You have a very bubbly, you know, very cheerful kind of a personality. And I think that is what will actually um, make the date more engaging, you know, mm. more interactive as well. My bad points. Come on, listen. Yeah. Oh, bad points. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think in a sense, uh, because probably um, right now you're still uncertain, you know, in terms mm. of where you're progressing to. So I think it really depends. And um, it's only after a few dates, then that's where you might have a different perspective of what you're looking for as well. Mm. So to have a serious relationship was really scary for me because I did not want to get stuck with the wrong person. I'm very particular about what I look for. One of the things that is obviously quite important is that you know she must be able to accept that I have this vision impairment. I did have an idea of the kind of partner I wanted. Just a guy that's taller, that has family values and is kind to me. I wanted somebody who would accept me for who I was and didn't want to change me. Well, I wasn't really like interested in relationships per se. I get along with him. It just kind of evolved naturally from there, I feel. After dating a few times, I started to realise that physical appearance really is not as important as the values. I was brought in a household whereby we are very religious. I question myself sometimes, but the thing is, uh, I felt that religion shouldn't keep us apart. Hey! Hey, hi! Hi, how are you Hello. doing? I'm good, how are you? Good! How was your matchmaking experience? So I met Michelle from Complete Me. Mm -hmm. um, interesting experience. It was a nice, um, nice to get useful insights from her about why she's doing what she's doing. The kind of people who go and use these kind of services. I think for me, I came in already with a little bit of a closed mind. I know. Michelle did say, I think she sensed my hesitation with a lot of it, and she did say, keep an open mind, which mm. I think is an advice that it's not just for me, it's for you, for everyone else. Mm. Um, you know, and yeah, it's really, really interesting. How about you? I met up with uh, Elena from Gai Gai, oh, okay. which is okay. an offline matchmaking agency. Uh, okay. if, I feel like maybe her process of like screening me was a bit more, like there was a methodology behind it. Okay. Um, but I don't really sort of, see or understand the science behind how they match people. In part of the profiling, I felt right. like they were... The questions that they asked me ended up making me feel as if I was being categorised and put into the box. What's the age range you're looking for in a partner then? What exactly is the highest education level then? How about in terms of like, you no know, income range? What exactly is more important for you when you, you are finding someone? I also realised that I was kind of doing the same thing to my potential partners because they asked me the same question about like, right. what I want in a partner, right? right? right. And I realised that, you know, I'm categorizing, I'm building this person. Sure, sure, this sure. This image, right? Okay, okay, interesting. But you did mention Kai Kai has set you up with they something. They have. Okay. So apparently after she profiled me, right. they have a date that's waiting for me. Wow. Michelle didn't really... I mean, also because I think like, yeah, I was like a bit hesitant. So I think that didn't like sort of pan out. But maybe another matchmaker in the I next see. couple of days. I don't know. Let's see how, yeah. Okay, so I've got a bit of a surprise. For you. My date's here somewhere. <laughs> no. Sadly, no. Okay. But I've been tasked by the production team right. to be your matchmaker. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, do you trust me? Let's just say yes. Okay. Let's just go. Keep an open mind, right? That's yeah, the advice. Exactly, Keep an open exactly, mind. Exactly. Let's do it. Yeah. And I think from today's session with Kai Kai, the profiling, I have a bunch of like tips that I've learned from them, which oh, I'm wow. going to apply to you okay. to help you find someone. Sure. So, Mo, tell me about your past relationships and what are your expectations? Where to begin? Hmm. Well, I was in a long-term relationship for a very, very, very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, got out of bed. Thank you.